Welcome to the workshop uh, about the Udall Scholarship for Undergraduates. I'm Kate Dalinger of Wellesley's own Department of Career Education. I have the great pleasure of working with students and alumni applying for scholarships and fellowships, including the Udall Scholarship. Um, this is a scholarship for sophomores and juniors who are US citizens or permanent residents uh, for leadership, public service, and commitment to the environment. Um, it honors the legacies of Morris Udall and Stuart Udall, whose careers had a significant impact on Native American self-governance and health care and the stewardship of public lands and natural resources. It's a scholarship of up to $7,000 a year to support the costs of your undergraduate education, and the foundation expects to award some 50 scholarships in 2019, which is really exciting. Um, who should apply? Um, folks who are interested in careers benefiting the environment. This means lots of different things. They interpret environmental issues very broadly and careers in environmental issues very broadly. So they include, for example, things like marine science and waste management and ecology, sustainable agriculture, urban planning, things that you might expect. But they also include things like biochem and um, journalism and theater if you're interested in work that makes a difference in the environmental movement, if you're interested in environmental justice. There are lots of different ways to be interested in the environment and interested in pursuing a career that pertains to environmental issues. Um, there is another separate category for sophomores and juniors who are Native American, Alaska Native, or First Nations students who are passionate about using their careers to benefit Indian country in general or their tribe in particular. Again, they interpret tribal policy and health care very broadly. So it could include, for example, traditional arts or social work or um, language preservation, as well as things like natural resources or wildlife management, economic development, elder care. Um, various kinds of health care, lots of different things. Um, so again, don't think too narrowly as you're thinking about what the scholarship is eligible for. Why should people think about applying? Because if you win, you get to join a fabulous and growing alumni network of distinguished leaders. You get to meet like-minded students. They bring everybody to um, Arizona, yes, in the summertime, but it's fantastic, trust me. You meet a whole, your whole core cohort of scholars, both Native American and environmental students all together. And they typically also have the um, students doing the Native American uh, congressional internships as well. So it's a really cool opportunity to meet fabulous like-minded people working on important issues. It's an opportunity, again, to multiply your impact by networking with other leaders in public services, as well as that scholarship for next year, which is, you know, not a bad thing. Speaking of the network, lots of people of many different descriptions have won the Udall scholarships. Um, this is from a Wellesley Daily Shop about a 2015 Udall scholar, um, Adelmas Vaquero, Wellesley class of 16, who is an environmental studies major. Um, but people do all sorts of interesting things. Here's somebody, again, who's looking at grassland songbirds, um, somebody interested in environmental health, um, species management in wetland and coastal ecosystems, um, which was informed by his own growing up in a family that lived a subsistence lifestyle of fishing, hunting, and farming um, in Hawaii. Uh, here we have um, a Native American student who is interested in fighting against human trafficking, um, somebody interested in promoting environmental cooperation between the US and China, um, somebody interested in nursing and American Indian studies. Notice that people have lots of different majors. They come from lots of different institutions. Sometimes they're transfer students. Um, they're not always typical age. And in fact, the Udall is a great option for Davis scholars. There is no age limit. Um, and so it's a, it's a good option for that reason for those students, but it's also for everybody who applies, important to think about um, the major piece of your UDAL application or your UDAL essay, and ha which asks you to engage with a specific piece of legislation or speech um, produced by one of the UDALs that speaks to your professional field of interest today and how you've engaged with that speech. More about that in a minute. 
Um, one other thing that's really important to point out, GPA for the UDAL is absolutely not the most important thing about you. Nobody is so boring that a number sums them up. Um, and certainly for the UDAL, that is not true. They don't have a GPA cutoff, and they're much more interested in your demonstrated commitment to the issues that you care about, your demonstrated service and leadership. Um, you need to be engaged in interesting and challenging coursework um, so that you are preparing to be as effective in your career as possible, but they realize that GPA is just one indicator of something about you and that there are many other ways to get at this. Um, as I mentioned, the things that you do for your campus, your community, and the environment are much more important for the UDAL than a number. Um, how do I demonstrate my commitment to the environment? You might want to think of ways that you've led positive solutions to environmental problems, whether it's on a small scale or a large scale, whether it's through your academic work, your research, through internships, um, and you tackled a particular problem that you had to deal with as an intern, or it's something that you did through a student um, interest group or club, or through community service, um, either at Wellesley or at home. Um, there might be lots of different ways to demonstrate your commitment to the environment in so many different ways. Again, they're thinking not just about inside the classroom, but outside the classroom. The fact that as you're thinking about ways to create positive solutions to environmental problems, remember that crossing the aisle is a really big part of the Udall legacy. This is part of how they were able to have such a big impact on um, and the stewardship of the environment was because they were able to get people who didn't necessarily agree with them on the importance of environmental issues to see the value for them of taking a particular action. Um, so thinking about, again, positive solutions is not just about like, can I have the bright idea? But when we're thinking about leadership, how do I get people to agree with me and take action? It's crossing the aisle, getting people to, um, who may or may not agree with you to work with you is a really important skill. Um, as part of that, to consider how you in your, in your own activities have demonstrated civility, integrity, and consensus in your work, because after all, this is part of the Udall Foundation's motto, um, is something that's important. So even when you're thinking about essays about leadership or public service, or here's this terrible problem that needs to be solved, thinking not only about what is the problem, um, and what kind of a solution might be the best way to tackle it, thinking about how you draw people together to turn that big idea into actual tangible change in the world is going to be really important. And again, to be able to do that um, with civility, integrity, and consensus is really important. And I think um, looking at the state of America today, one can see why those things are of particular value. If I've intrigued you and you are interested in learning more about the Udall Scholarship, the best thing to do is to go to the Career Education website and type Udall into the search box at the upper right hand corner and it will pop stories about the Udall and also the campus page of information about the Udall Scholarship, which includes the campus application deadline, which this year is February 8th, 2019. And there's more information and all kinds of links, including to the story about Adamus having won the UDAL. Um, it also tells you there's an application timeline and checklist and helps you find the application um, and all kinds of details. Um, before we get to that, what I'd like to do is to have you look at the handout, which again, I realize isn't green and I apologize about that. But as you're looking at the Udall Scholarship and thinking about applying, I don't want you to go to that application and see all those questions and think, oh my gosh, I can't do that. You can do that. Um, and so one of the things that I thought might be helpful is for me to just walk through some of those questions and what kinds of things they're looking for, um, some pro tips for how to give really good and compelling answers, and also just how do you get your head around some of these things. Um, so, one of the first substantive questions in the application asks you to describe your career goals. Um, one of the most common problems with this, and they just want one or two sentences, so it can't be a really big detailed involved answer to this, but you need to have something more than like, I want to stop global warming. It's a really great ambition and it's really important 
tell us a little bit more about what that might look like in terms of your career goals, what kind of work you want to do, what kind of approach to that you might want to take. You have a longer essay in the next question that asks, what are your professional aspirations? What issues, needs, or problems do you hope to address? Indicate in which areas of the environment or tribal public policy or Native American health care you were considering making your career, and specify how your academic program and overall educational plans will assist you in achieving your goals. Um, so for that, you have a longer um, character limit, which is great. And so that allows you to say, okay, if this is my career goal, what's the specific problem or need that makes you want to pursue that career? And how, if this is a big problem or need, is there a particular piece of that that you might want to tackle? Is there something that you're thinking of doing, for example, um, for graduate study? Like if you want to tackle environmental law, you're probably going to have to get a law degree, so if you're thinking about doing that, this is a good chance to sort of flesh out a little bit more detail about what's behind that very short career goal in the first question I mentioned. If you are looking for advice on career strategy um, and or choice of graduate and professional degrees to prepare you for this, um, do know that I am part of a fabulous team of people in career education and there are great resources for different career communities available on our website, um, wellesley.edu slash career education. Um, if you go to career communities, you'll be able to see, for example, resources for people interested in careers in nonprofit and social impact, um, in things like the physical sciences, um, in government service, in healthcare, lots of different areas. Um, check events listings on the career education website for pop-up advising. All of the career advisors do pop-up advising on different days of the week. And the fellowships team does pop-up advising as well. Um, you'll also find in the events listings workshops, alumni panels, all kinds of great things to help you as you're thinking with kind of career strategy and what you might, how, how this might actually be borne out in your own planning and thinking. Then there's a bunch more in the application of kind of basic information, and then there are some more substantive essays in section D, which is where you can demonstrate your commitment to your field of interest through research, activities, and service. Um, question D4 asks you to describe non-course related research experience, if, any, if you have any applicable research experience. They ask you to indicate which areas of the environment or tribal public policy or Native American health care your research affects and the ways in which this experience will help you in achieving your goals. So one of the things to think about this is like, wow, non-course related research experience, what are they talking about? This could be um, an independent research project that you've done or a senior thesis that you're thinking about proposing. Even if you haven't yet done it, you can describe it in this essay. On the other hand, um, research takes lots of different forms. So whether you're doing your own research project or you are being a research assistant for a faculty member or you're doing research associated with an internship or something like that, it may also be, for example, that if you're trying to solve a problem, maybe you had to do a community survey um, as part of your attempts to um, create a solution to a problem on campus that counts as research and you can talk about what you learned from that experience that will help that has shaped your thinking about your career goals your professional aspirations and the best way that you might be able to make a contribution to those things um, think creatively again about this research experience i know research sounds pretty straightforward it isn't always necessarily so don't undersell yourself you may have lots more relevant experiences than you think Speaking of relevant experiences, question D5 asks you to describe a leadership experience in which you made a difference on campus or in your community. Leadership is one of those big awful words that students often um, worry about or like they think, oh, what if I'm not a president of something? What if I'm, I don't have a particular role? Leadership is not actually about a title, but it's about being able to translate an idea into actual change in the world, about being able not only to spot the problem and potential solutions, but also to persuade people to take action with you. Remember that whole working across the aisles thing that the Udalls were so well known for um, and about the whole kind of civility um, thing that they, they want you to think about as you're thinking about how do you do creative problem solving. So this can be a really, this essay can be a really good opportunity to talk about 
how you translate bright ideas into tangible change in the world. And it could be something really small, it could be something really big, it could be something that you did while you were president of something, or it could be that something you did when you had, you weren't part of a group at all, um, but you stepped up and did something about it. Often the experiences that people do describe do involve working with a group, because that is after all how, how one um, demonstrates leadership and makes change happen. Um, one of the things to be aware of when you're talking about that is don't just talk about our group did this, we achieved these things, we learned the following. They want to know what your particular contributions to this were and what you learned from this experience. Um, and so don't be shy in this particular instance, even if you're not, you know, saying you're the best thing since life's bread, you achieved everything single-handedly, which frankly is unlikely that any of us, we all, you know, it always takes a village, right? And that's okay, but it needs to be clear what role you played in that village and what things you learned from this experience that helped create a difference um, in your community. Before I keep buzzing on, do you have particular questions or concerns or things reasonably clear so far? With some of the more um, anecdotal um, questions, um, would it be better if it's uh, they're more recent activities as opposed to a few years ago? That's an excellent question. Generally speaking, more recent is helpful. That is more often the case with the leadership essay. With the next question I'm going to talk about, that's not necessarily something that might have happened recently. Um, it's where they ask you to describe a specific activity or experience that's been important in clarifying or strengthening your commitment to the environment or tribal policy or Native American health care. Um, again, there may have been something that happened a while ago that made you think, this is something that I really care about and that started you on a path of um, concern with the environment. Um, and so that may not have been recent. But generally speaking, for leadership, yeah, it's more important. They want to see, like, what have you done lately? And in fact, you continue to grow and change as a person, so it's helpful to see, again, something that's a more recent experience of leadership. But that's an excellent question. Um, uh, Let's see, for some of the other things, um, again, similarly, uh, there's another question that is about um, your most significant public service, community, or campus activities associated with your interest in the environment or tribal policy or Native American health care in which you regularly participate. And they ask you to explain the duration, degree, and significance of your involvement. Um, service, by the way, can be paid or unpaid. Um, but again, they're looking, I think, primarily for things that are fairly recent, because hopefully some of those, some of the things you're doing like right now are pretty significant to you, and that's why you're doing them. But it may be that you are continuing to do something that you've been doing for several years. Um, so that counts. And does that help with your sort of time question? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing about the public service question, um, again, this is not like, I did this amazing public service thing and I'm the best thing since sliced bread, which is good because most of us don't like to brag like that. The good news is they're not asking you to do that. What the nice thing about this is, is that you get to decide what makes it significant. What makes this something that is, why is this significant to you and how is it related to your interest in the environment and what you've learned about that and how that's um, shaping your thinking about what you want to do. So you don't have to be bragging in this. It can be very much like, wow, this, you know, like I learned a lot from this. Um, but it should also be uh, clear from your essay um, how this experience has encouraged your future plans for sort of service in, in the field of environmental. Um, issues, however that service, whatever form that takes, and again, paid or unpaid, um, think creatively about what working in environmental fields looks like. Remember that slide early on, like it could be theater. Um, but, but how has this significant public service shaped your thinking about that? What we're trying to do is get an overall picture of your long-standing interest in different things that you've done that have shaped your thinking about this issue and the contribution you want to make to this. Which is a nice segue for um, the last short answer question in the application, which is what additional information, not already addressed in the application, do you wish to share with the Udall Scholarship Review Committee? 
this is this question again often like people go oh my gosh what are they looking for here they're not looking for anything in particular but they've asked you a bunch of very specific questions you have a bunch of very short answers there's probably stuff that you couldn't fit in that may be really important so this is a gift from the committee to the applicant you, something else that you think is really important that you would want the committee to know and it may be again about some other really important experience that has shaped your long-standing interest in environmental issues or another important learning experience or something that um, just really matters to you or it may be something else that's really important about you your activities etc like the fact that um, you know, there could be lots of things in there. It could be like the candidate on the slide earlier whose own interest in um, uh, conserving waterways was sparked by his growing up living as a subsistence fisher and farmer. Um, that wouldn't come out when he's talking about leadership or public service or kinds of things, and yet it's a really important uh, part of that student's application. Is there something that's really important about you that hasn't otherwise come across in the application? This is a gift of a spot for that. The last question is the long you all essay, um, which in 100, 800 words or fewer, asks you to describe a significant public speech, legislative act, book, or policy statement by Congressman Morris K. Udall or Secretary of the Interior Stuart L. Udall and its impact on your field of study, your field of interest, and longer-term career goals. Huge, broad question. You get to choose which piece of writing you want to engage with that relates to what your longer term interests are and that you feel like you can really dig into that's, that's interesting to you, that's made you think differently about things. Um, there is a very helpful guide to the Udall papers available on the Udall official application and it's linked from the Wellesley Udall page. Um, so you can find um, a link to all kinds of uh, different papers and books and that's a really helpful way to explore various of the Udall papers and think about what would I want to do. You're not expected to be um, an expert on either Mo Udall or Stuart Udall um, at the time of application, but read a bunch of different papers, books, articles, etc. and find something that really speaks to you, that really speaks to your longer term interests. Um, sort of uh, based on, say, your academic studies, your research, your public service activities, your leadership, the kind of work that you hope to do in the longer term. Um, things that make for a really strong Udall essay involve finding a topic that really aligns with your own goals and interests. If you're writing about something that they wrote about water conservation, but you're actually interested in something else entirely, that's not going to allow your, you to shine in this Udall essay. Um, they're also asking for you to think critically about the message in the speech legislative act book or policy statement um, and how you're interpreting it, how you're applying it to contemporary issues in your field and of interest to you. They're looking for some fresh perspectives on a new topic familiar topic. This doesn't mean that you have to come up with something nobody's ever said before, but they're looking for your particular take on this and how you're really engaging with the question and the issue. Um, they're looking for it to be well written, and so that's important to strive for. Um, make this really about that critical engagement with the speech or the book or whatever it is. It shouldn't be, this shouldn't be a glorified personal statement. Um, do dig a little deeper than you'd all said this and then he said this and I, you know that was really smart and I agree with it. Dig, dig into that a little more. What, what made that really smart? Why do you agree with it? How does it have a bearing on things? How has the world changed since maybe a speech made you know 30 years ago? Um, how might you'd all approach that question today or how might new challenges of today be approached by you all or what do you take from that book that inspires your approach to challenges today really kind of engage with it thoroughly um, 
do, do mention the Udalt and their legacy. This is a scholarship that's meant to honor their legacy, so they want scholars really to engage with the legacy, show some understanding of what that legacy is beyond, say, one legislative act. Um, but really think about how you might, um, in your own work, be inspired by their legacy. Um, and think about, again, how their legacy applies to what it is that you want to do, even if it is environmental justice theater, um, which obviously neither one of them did, but like, how do you apply it to what you want to do? Um, and really have some fun with this. And so one of the things that you may want to do, there was a very famous um, guide to how to do a Udall scholarship draft in 20 days which was designed to be done you know, step by step every day in about three weeks over winter break. Um, and they advise very sensibly that you spend, you know, one day you find like three books or art, three articles or legislative acts that you're, you're interested in reading and read through those and see what that has. And then it asks you to go think about some other things. And then a couple of days later, come back and read like three more um, articles or legislative acts or a book or something and then you know so that you can read lots of different things and get a sense of what piece really speaks to you and connects with your professional interests um, and then really think about things like how's the era when the speech was written different from today um, how is it the same how did that speech or legislation speak to the country politically historically when it was written how does it speak to the country today um, how does it address your own professional goals and potentially influence your work? Was Mr. Udall right? Why was he right exactly? Or why do you think he was partly right, but in the light of what's going on today, you know, maybe he might think of things differently or you might think of things differently. Um, as you're brainstorming these essays, write down anything. Don't edit. Don't decide, oh, I don't know if this is what they're looking for. Think about the questions that really speak to you. Um, I don't know that you really need to spend you know, 30 to 90 minutes every day for three weeks working on your UDAL application over break. You probably have a lot of other things you want to do. Um, I do have the, the helpful guide if that is useful to you. Um, but I think thinking about some of those questions and reading different um, speeches and whatnot is a really helpful way just to get a better sense of what the legacy is and to find a piece of writing that really speaks to you because that's that's one of the tricks for this is because it's hard to get dig into something if you're like eh, eh, it's okay whatever I don't know that I have much to say about it. it's gonna be hard to write a really good essay about it um, so spend some time to find the right thing to write about so you have all those different pieces of the application you have all those short answers they'll see a transcript um, they'll see various things about your activities, um, what might otherwise be on a resume, and we do ask for a resume for the campus committee, even though it's not an official part of the UDAL application. You don't need official transcripts, by the way, as part of your application. Unofficial grade reports that you can extract from like your student account works just great. We don't want you to have to spend money to apply for the UDAL scholarship. Um, one other really important piece of your application is three letters of reference. And so one of the things is you're thinking about your career goals and aspirations, the issues you care about, your leadership, public service, research experience, those kinds of things. Who are the people who can be, as it were, expert witnesses on your behalf who can say, because this is not your job but theirs, this is why this student is the best thing since sliced bread. Here's why I think this student really has the potential to make a difference in the field, why I think this person is a good fit for the Udall scholarship. So if you think about the classes you've taken, the activities you, you've pursued, the internships, the, um, all the different things that have a bearing on your interest in environmental issues or tribal policy or public health, and who can speak to that? With whom have you done research or done a really interesting internship or who's seen you do that leadership experience that you write about? Um, who's seen you doing work in the community, whether it's here on campus or outside? And in fact, it's really helpful if you can get at least one letter from somebody outside of Wellesley. 
Um, the Udall Scholarship is awarded um, state by state, and so if you've done, um, say, public service or environmental or other kinds of things in your home community, and there's somebody who might be able to speak to that, that's really helpful. If you haven't, no worries. You can also have a really strong application with letters from Wellesley. But I think even within letters from Wellesley, think creatively about um, who can be a good expert witness, whose own field of experience, expertise, um, commitment to the environment, commitment to public service, um, who's seen like lots of young people exhibit leadership, those kinds of things. Who can, re who has good, ex good basis on which to write a strong letter of reference for you? And then start talking to those people early. Let them know today even. You know, I'm thinking about applying for the Utah Scholarship. And here's why, you know, I think, I think I did this really interesting thing with you, whatever it was, and here's how that has a bearing on my thinking. Do you think that it all seems like a good fit? Um, if I were to apply, do you feel you know me well enough? Do you feel you have time enough to write a, a letter of reference in support of my application? What would you need for me to be able to do that? Often recommenders would like to see, say, drafts of essays and things, so you want to start having at least rough drafts that you can share with people if they'd like to see them um, early enough that they can write their letters in timely fashion. So start those conversations, and you don't have to start by saying, I'm going to apply for the UDAL, will you write me a letter? You can start by saying, you know, I heard about this cool scholarship, and it's making me think about my future plans, which makes me realize like how much I learned by working with you and you know could I pick your brain you know could you give me some advice that's a great way to start it also means not only do you get some good advice from your recommenders it gives you a sense of who might be good people to ask for letters and in, when you do ask them for letters if they agree to write it gives them more material to help them write strong specific letters of reference so starting early is one of the smartest things that you can do, even if you feel like, ah, I can write a Udall essay overnight, it's not a problem, I'm not suggesting you actually need to spend you know, 30 minutes a day or 90 minutes a day for three weeks to do this, but it does take longer than one might think to put together a strong application, if only because, think about all the other things you're juggling, think about the busy seasons of what's going on in people's lives, um, and leave enough time to be able to seek advice from mentors, um, especially the people that you might think of asking for letters, so that you give them lots of advance notice when you're asking for a letter. That's one of the best things that you can do to be mindful of your recommender's time and to set them up for success for writing a beautiful, strong letter of reference. It's much harder for them to do that if they don't have sufficient time or they haven't had a chance really to like, talk with you about why you're even interested in this. Um, maybe they know you're interested in environmental issues by virtue of what they've seen you do, but they've never, you, maybe you've not had a chance to have a bigger conversation about career aspirations and interests and that kind of thing. So this is a really good opportunity for that. The more they get to know you and why you're particularly interested in these things and can help shape your thinking about, oh, if you're interested in this, oh, you should think about this, or how about taking that class, or how about, oh, you know, there's this really cool internship, or I know somebody who's looking for a research assistant, or um, wow, did you know there's this great organization doing this kind of work? It might lead to internships, it might lead to um, you know, better preparation for graduate professional school, it might lead to all sorts of things in addition to a strong letter of reference, but none of all of that good stuff can happen if you don't leave enough time for it. So I'm delighted that you are here now, which is well in advance of the February deadline. You're ahead of the game. Take advantage of that, ride that momentum, and even if you don't do something every day for X number of weeks, um, start now and keep coming back to it. A little bit at a time actually adds up really quickly to a really beautiful application. Um, and again, as you're thinking about that beautiful application and putting together all these different parts, you want to think about how they give as well-rounded and rich a picture of you and your commitment to your chosen field as possible. Um, and that they kind of speak together. If one essay talks about, oh, I'm, I really care a lot about sustainable agriculture, and another one talks about um, uh, carbon, um, and another one talks about biochem, somebody might be thinking, what exactly are you interested in doing? You want the pieces to come together and add up to something greater than the sum of the parts. And that's not to say that everything has to be completely related. 
but you need to be able to articulate how those pieces are related and how the pieces come together, even if they're really disparate experiences, how they have come together to shape your thinking and your future path. Maybe you learn from something that X, you know, was not your forte, or you learn from something else that, oh, this is something I'm really interested in or really care about, or here's a way that I could really make a contribution. I care about these things, but this is something that taught me I could make a contribution that makes a difference. Um, think about, again, how all those pieces add up to something greater than the sum of the parts. And doing something complicated like that, again, takes more time than like 24 hours before the deadline. And I know that Wellesley students are crazy busy. Um, so again, starting ahead and starting to talk to recommenders early is one of the smartest things that you can be doing. This is a lot of work. Um, this is a very competitive national scholarship. Yes, they're going to be um, naming 50 scholars, but that's going to be from applications from uh, colleges and universities across the country. You may or may not win. It's a lot of time and work. Why should you consider putting time and work and energy and your heart into an application that may or may not pan out? Because one, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And if you don't apply, you can't possibly win the scholarship or get access to that amazing community of alumni and other students committed to working on the same kinds of issues you really care about. And two, because the application itself asks really good and valuable and helpful questions. Investing in yourself by taking the time to wrestle with what is it that I really care about? What do I think I want to do? What are the things that I'm doing to start to prepare for this? How have some of the experiences that I've had come together to shape my thinking about what I want to do? The practice articulating a good case for yourself and what you want to do, getting together a team of recommenders, all of that is valuable experience. Even if you never apply for another scholarship or fellowship in your life, you're going to apply for jobs. This is all transferable skills and experience, and if the least that you get out of working on this application is a clearer sense of what you want to do in the world and, a, and practice making a good case for yourself so you land a really cool internship or job or you get into a fabulous graduate or professional school, it's not wasted time or energy. Um, if you do this right, the application process itself absolutely can be a very valuable process, and I'm here to help. The career team is here to help. The fellowships team is here to help. We can help you brainstorm. Oh gosh, I'm just feeling overwhelmed by this application. How do I even tackle it? Whom should I ask for references? I'm just not sure. Like, I don't know that there are three people I can ask for references. Um, let me help you brainstorm. I'd be delighted to do that. Um, if you're looking for feedback on essays, again, career education and in particularly the fellowships team would love to help with that. Um, as you're working on something like a Udall essay, that might be something that you really want to get feedback and advice from your recommenders on. So again, planning ahead is a smart thing. Um, so investing in your time, your time, your energy, and in putting together that team of recommenders and gaining that good experience and that clarity about what you want to do and how to make a case for it, it's all valuable. And I really hope that you will be the next Wellesley Udall scholar and there will be that benefit too, but that would only be one piece of the benefit. I've been doing fellowships advising for more than a decade and I've watched thousands of students and alums prove the value of the process, which is why I love the work that I do, is that I get to help you gain the most from the process, whether or not you win the scholarship. Although, yes, I hope you win the scholarship. Um, so invest in yourself, give yourself the shot to do this, take the time to think about this and figure out what you want to do and where you want to go. I promise you won't regret it. Um, and um, if you have additional questions, we are still here. I'm here to answer questions. We have some time this afternoon, but also even after this finishes, you can always send your queries to fellowships at wellesley.edu which is one of the best ways to get quick answers about fellowships because Caitlin Roberts Donovan, who couldn't join us this afternoon, and I both monitor that account, and, um, and you'll get an answer more quickly. Is there anything I might be able to answer for you now? Um, I've done some work abroad um, in the Philippines. Um, um, are they looking more for work 
directly within the context of the United States? Not at all, not necessarily. And if the work that you did in the Philippines is important and relevant to you, absolutely write about it in your application. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and your career could be international. It's not that you necessarily are going to have a US-based career for your whole life either. Or you could be interested in environmental issues. And in fact, environmental issues of their nature often have an impact on more than just one country. Um, and the things that happen in one country have an impact on others as well. So I, I don't think that you know, having international experience is at all a bad thing. What kind of thing did you do in the Philippines? I, I had an internship there with a, like a solar company. Oh, cool. So it was really good to visit water, like the rural um, water villages, like, I guess fishing villages, and sort of see the, some of the environmental problems that they have to deal with. Yeah, wow. I bet that had a huge impact on you. <laughs> um, and it at least changed your thinking about some of the things that you thought you knew and gave new perspective to things that you'd already experienced. Has that experience shaped your interest in coursework or research or further internships or? Great. It made me like, narrow down what sort of, in, within the fields of environmentalism, what I'd like to do. Fantastic. Great. That, that sounds like an important thing to be writing about in your UDAL application. Absolutely. Fantastic. And I guess my last question is, um, when it comes to public serv service, you said that there are so many different forms it can take. Mm -hmm. um, what are, um, I guess what parameters would make, I mean, obviously it's a, a very broad based um, de definition, but I guess when thinking about public service um, generally, are there parameters that we should keep in mind of what counts towards that? Um, it could be lots of different things. It could be um, an internship with uh, a nonprofit that's doing something of benefit to some group or society or the environment. It could be a student organization. It could be um, uh, an internship with some branch of government. It could be uh, work with um, that you just did yourself. It could be um, changing something here on campus. You know, that's of service to the college community. Um, it could be something in your home community. It could be um, uh, changing, for example, um, the way that food gets to a soup kitchen in your local community. It could be lots of different things. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> 